What would it look like if you could know exactly what to do to be successful in your art? What if you no longer felt this overwhelming feeling of not knowing which way to go or what to do? Wouldn't it be great if you knew how to expand your artistic reach, share your paintings with the world and know exactly how to do it? In this video series, I'm going to share with you the formula that I have personally used, plus share the secrets that are seldom talked about, but are so important to your success. Now, if you are currently feeling stuck in your art, overwhelmed or drained with everything that you need to do, and perhaps you even feel like you're a hamster on the hamster wheel doing the same thing, but staying in the same place, then this video series is one that you don't want to miss. Welcome to the Roadmap to Artistic Success. Hi, I'm Gwen Fox, and I'm a professional artist and kick-ass art coach and workshop teacher. I empower artists to find their artistic voice and style and then develop that style so they can be successful in presenting their art to galleries and collectors. Plus, I'm the author of the upcoming book, Create Brilliantly. I live in Taos, New Mexico, in a 100-year-old adobe home with my three dogs, Wilson, Sage, and the OG. Now, when I purchased this house, it was a fixer-upper. It was really in bad shape, but now it's surrounded with flowers and filled with lots of love. Now, because I have been able to achieve a six-figure income with my art, I now take the knowledge that I've accumulated all of these years, and I offer this to others in order so they can learn in a very simple, non-complicated way. Now, in this first video, I'm going to tell you a couple of the big things that greatly hinder the success of artists and keep them where they think they'll never be a full artist. And if this sounds something that you're interested in, stick with me. You know the feeling when you're doing everything you can to succeed in your art and nothing's happening, especially during trying times such as this right now. You know, with the pandemic, Artists are, they don't know what to do because, because they think that people aren't gonna buy art because they have to buy necessities. But guess what? This is the time when you really work on your art, try new things, develop a series, whatever, because then you're gonna be ahead when everybody else is catching up when this is over and it will be over. Now, here's my philosophy. I do not go with the herd mentality. When they're zigging, you zag. And to me, that is the perfect way to always get ahead. You know, I bet that your friends think that you go into the studio every day and you're like a kid. All you do is play. And they don't realize how hard you work and then you end up ruining a painting. And then I bet they also think Every time you go in there, you create a masterpiece. No big deal. Don't you wish that were the truth? Hey, you know what? I'm going to the studio now, so why don't you join me? Come on. Welcome to my studio. I'm so glad that you're here. Now, in this first video, I'm going to give you two very important things that you need to succeed as an artist. But first, I must warn you that building a business around your personal brand or your personal expertise is unlike any other business, either online or off. When you're the artist, you are the CEO. You're the social media guru. You're the bookkeeper, the writer, the networker. You're the one taking the inventory of all your supplies. You're the salesperson, and you're the one constantly producing those great ideas, but this part you love. In fact, though you are everything. You are even the product. When you're starting out, you're in every position of your art business. When you're doing everything, it can be hard to gain momentum and keep it up. And this can be overwhelming and sometimes debilitating. I certainly understand that and I bet you do too. Forbes had an interesting article the other day on why businesses fail. And the reason they found was that businesses don't have a, 
a roadmap, or a process in order to sell their product. Now, our product are our paintings, or we're selling ourselves as an artist as well as our teaching. Artists that succeed are doing it through a roadmap. This takes you from where you are today to where you want to be. So many artists are constantly following the next big thing without even knowing if it's gonna be right for them. You know, is it gonna take them where they wanna go? This depends on their personal individual goals. Now, if an artist that say you admire is taking this big workshop or found a book or a color that they love, you figure, well, hey, I'm gonna do that because they know what they're doing. What this does is it keeps you in constant flux, never knowing exactly how to get from where you are to where you dream of being, and you're constantly a follower. But there's a fix, and this is knowing your own personal roadmap, your own personal plan, steps to take you from where you are to where you want to be. This is a plan, and this is what I love calling a roadmap. Knowing where you want to be in three months, six months, or even maybe two years from now is so important. If you don't know where you want to go, how are you going to get there? Now, I'm willing to bet that there are many artists who don't even have a plan for the next two weeks, let alone three months. They just let it happen. But here's the thing. Two years from now, they're still going to be in the same place. And I do not want that to be you. Now, you might be thinking that having a plan will stifle your creativity and you like to be free, you know, to do the way you want to do. You prefer to go with the flow. However, this method of thinking has gotten you here and you want to be there. A wonderful creative artist that I dearly love and coach is Joan Moody from Texas. She came to me and said she was so frustrated because she had done everything that she could and she was not getting anywhere. So what did she need to do? What am I doing wrong, she asked. So we sat down and went over what she was doing. Now she was doing a lot of things right, but there were a couple of key things missing. So we developed a plan of which she took into action. This is the key word, she took action and put everything into place. And months later, Joan decided to have a one woman show. The show was beautiful with lots of people attending. The man walked in, of course, of whom she didn't know. He looked around and he bought five of her large paintings on the spot. Went home a happy man with beautiful original art to enhance his home. Now, having a plan doesn't crush your creativity, it actually enhances it, and it gives you the freedom and direction. So stick with me, because throughout this video series, I'm gonna show you how great it will work for you. But, you know what, I gotta, I gotta tell you something, I think I need to sit down to tell you this. You know, I have to be honest with you. I didn't always have this figured out. Ever hear the phrase that you end up teaching what you need to learn most? Well, that was me. Always the serial entrepreneur, always looking for the next big idea. When I started out, I was a typical artist. I didn't know anything, so I took all the courses that was out there. The problem was is I took too many courses because the very thing that I thought was going to help me ended up confusing me. I remember the exact moment when things changed for me. I took my first workshop two months shy of my 50th birthday. I was like a sponge. I was trying to absorb everything I could, and I loved each workshop, and I went home happy and filled with excitement. And after each workshop, though, after about two weeks, I felt emptiness, and I, and I couldn't figure it out. What was missing? What path had I taken wrong? I didn't know. I knew there was more than just mixing colors and creating design. There was something deeper. Yes, you needed to know design. You need to know how to mix colors and so forth, but there was more. But what was it? I asked myself the question, why did some artists succeed when they weren't as good as the other artists? And you know what I'm talking about, because you've personally witnessed it. An artist that has sold a lot of work on a show and they're not nearly as good as you are. 
Now the big question is why? So finding this out became my obsession. And in the next two videos, I'm gonna share with you exactly why some artists sell more than others and they're not as good as you. Some interesting information according to the National Endowment of the Arts, artists are highly entrepreneurial. Artists are generally more educated than other workers. And the NATA, which is a, re a research firm, found that there are 4.4 million active artists. 3.2 of them are recreational. Now I've got to ask you, with that many artists, how are you going to stand out? How is what you create going to stand out? This is what I'm going to break down for you and what it's going to take to get your work seen and then how can you get paid for your art? There are two things, two big things that I find that artists don't do successfully and one, how to sell or talk about their art or how to talk about themselves. Why? Because artists view this as selling and generally artists don't like to sell. Some feel that their paintings should speak for themselves and so they don't say anything to entice the viewer to come into the painting and I admit it, it's hard to put words to something that you're so close to. Having a show or talking about your work, I personally feel is like stepping out on the stage with no clothes on. <laughs> you put everything out for people to judge what you love the most. They're there to judge. And this can be and is terrifying. So what could you do to overcome this? You can overcome it with learning how to talk about your art in a way that's comfortable and honest. In other words, it's filled with integrity and authenticity. Let's take this for example. You're at a party and the person next to you is a total stranger and after introducing yourself, they ask you, what do you do? So you say, I'm an artist. And the next question is usually, well, what type of art do you do? Now, you may say something like, I'm a mixed media artist, I do abstracts or landscapes. And then you discover this pregnant silence. Why? Because you haven't given enough information for them to ask another question. There is nowhere for the conversation to go because the questions about art is more difficult than if you said, I'm in real estate. Well, they'd say, how's the market? Okay. That's an easy one, but you know what? Art is another matter. Easy for us, but difficult for them. So let's try this again. Let's, let's uh, make your answer simple and enticing. So we're back at the party, and the person asks you, what do you do? And you smile, and you confidently answer, I am a professional artist, and I create stunning abstracts that people love. Now, doesn't that sound just a little bit more interesting and a little bit more enticing? Because you need to give them some meat. You need to give them some to hang on to. You, as the artist, need to be remembered as much as your art. And this is a simple, there is a simple formula that you can use to be remembered. And this is what I call the three eyes. When you talk about your work, make it interesting. If painted on location, then talk about the location, why you painted it. What you want is interaction with the viewer. This allows the viewer to become attached to the painting because of the story. Now the second one is add intrigue. People love mystery. It's always a good way to spark their curiosity. Mystery will pull a viewer in quicker than anything. Third is informative. People love to learn. And when you talk about the three eyes in story form, it comes across as information that they can share with their friends. When a person likes a painting, it makes this, make the story interesting and intriguing and compelling. This way, they not only remember the painting, but they remember you. And if they remember both you and the art, you're likely to have a future collector. Remember, it's up to you to cause interest in your work. Now, this is a writer downer. 
It is up to you to cause interest in your work. And I know there are those who say, well, my paintings speak for themselves, but actually your painting doesn't speak for itself. You painted the painting, but the viewer needs to be enticed into your world. Jan Griggs, a fabulous painter who lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. I met Jan when she came to one of my workshops in Taos and she was new to painting, but serious about learning. She decided to sign up for my coaching and so I coached her for a full year. Now, she was able then to get into shows, sell her work, and Jan realized that she didn't know how to talk about her art. So we got together, went over the three eyes, developed her story, and after that, Jan found out her sales tripled. So learning to talk about your art is huge. But the problem in the art world is that there are too many BSOs, and that stands for bright, shiny object. A bright, shiny object is something that takes your eye away from the prize. It looks good, but sounds good, but you bite the bullet and off you are on an adventure only to find out it isn't for you. Now you need to find your way back to your roadmap. I've done this, and what it does is it takes away from your success. It takes time. And we will talk more about the bright, shiny object syndrome in the next video. Now your roadmap is like putting a puzzle together. It's a process, and it's powerful. When you have a roadmap, and your art is going to grow because you know what it's going to take to get you to the next step. It's amazing and your whole art business runs much smoother. What it does for you is it gets you out of the overwhelm and constant wondering which way to go and what to do. Whether you want to create paintings that get you into top galleries or major jury shows, you have a road map so that you know what you need to do, when you need to do it, and how to do it. You know, it's easy to get stuck, and I know, as I've been stuck several times in my art, the key is to follow the roadmap. Why reinvent the process when there is one that is guaranteed to get you to success? In the upcoming videos, I'm going to walk you through the two things that are extremely important for your success as an artist. I love the fact that you've stuck with me this far, and because I love you so much, I'm going to make sure that this video series is incredibly valuable for you. Thank you so much for watching the Roadmap to Artistic Success, and I will see you in video two.